<laughs> Here we are downtown at 615 in Rochester and um, January 27th. And I'd like to confirm that this meeting has been posted in three public places, right? And on the website and emailed to interested parties yes. in the world. All right. So we can legally continue on. Before we start, does anyone have any additions to the agenda they'd like to make tonight? Harlan. Usual. But usual. Okay. Missing books. All right. And Mason, you have something? Yeah. Uh, just an announcement at the end of the, toward the end of the meeting. Okay. All right. And then we'll go right to we, um, the last meeting. We could not approve the minutes from the um, December 23rd meeting because um, we didn't have enough people here to do that. I wasn't at this meeting, so um, I will leave that to you guys to approve those minutes. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from December 23rd. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we got that. And we also have the minutes from hello the um, last meeting of January 13th. And I would like to make a statement. I'd like to make a correction to what was uh, noticed on the Orca Media video that uh, someone from the audience had made a statement that the Budget and Finance Committee meetings that were closed. That indeed is not true. Those are open meetings and they conform to the open meeting law and they were duly warned. So I just want to make that correction. So that's from something that is an Orca Media. It is an Orca Media, but minutes. not in the not minutes. minutes. Yeah. So. All right, so I'd move to approve these as typed up. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good catch. Watching mm -hmm. Orca Media. So these are these two okay. for you. And we had in on the um, in the guest line, uh, Mason. You had something you had put on the agenda or requested put on the agenda last meeting, which was about the treatment of. Um, personal data, important numbers, and the town records. Is that do you wanted no. to? No, was it? Isn't that what you wanted to talk about? I thought it was uh, recreation. No. No. Okay. No, this is going okay. back with Bruce Marshall and over cyber issues. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And. Um, I put it on the agenda to see if we have a discussion about it. And in my opinion, I, I feel pretty strongly that if the town can benefit uh, with a policy about our town records. Well, we have, there's, I don't want to interrupt, but there is, we we have to conform to state rules about those. It's it's even That's above our policies. policies. It can easily be part of the no. policy. Um, but. Talking about nine, nine I, VSA two four four zero is the is the statute that that dictates. Well, right now we're minute. dealing with issues when Bruce came in mm -hmm. concerned about social security numbers and things like that. Uh, I, I'm feeling that the usage of cell phones uh, to record our records uh, shouldn't happen uh, or other. Uh, electronic equipment. If someone is looking for a copy, that it be a hard copy, and it actually probably should be dated and signed off by the uh, uh, town clerk. Now, a copy like that can leave the office, and then it can be photographed all at once, but it, it's marked as a copy. What kind of records are you referring to? Any records that people are looking for for the purpose of uh, 
uh, obtaining. What if someone comes in and wants a copy of the of a tax map? Is that, that part of your? They can get a hard copy print. I'm I, okay. I'm going to ask you a question. What would be the harm in photographing a tax map? A lot of towns have them online. Right. Well, that would probably be the way to go there. Okay. Well, there's well, different just, types of records. Okay. I'm just trying to clarify what yeah. kind of records you're right. referring to. Well, a lot of records are just right. public information. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, it's pretty easy to have a, a phone and be taking photographs. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, That's why people use them. Right. And then you. Well, right. And that's the question. That was, I think that was what Bruce Marshall was, you know, was referring to his concerns about safety. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could be a protection for the town to stay with hard copies leaving the office. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to understand this. If, if it's a public record, and anybody can come in and get a copy of that public record. Yes. Why can't they photograph it with their phone? What's what's the difference? Uh, if they receive a hard copy, mm -hmm. it can be dated by the town clerk. Okay. As so a copy, when it's photographed, it's unclear. Well, what what's the what would be the purpose of that date? when it was obtained as a copy. Why would, why, why would I be concerned about that? Well, we don't know yet. It's, it's similar issues that you were looking into with the cyber issues. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of hidden areas. I'm looking at how do we protect ourselves. But what are we protecting ourselves against in this case? I mean, there's, cer there's certainly things we don't want out there. recorded as being a copy. Okay, but I'm still not. I'm still not grasping in that. Maybe it's just me, but if it's a public record, what's the difference? Anybody can view a public record. <laughs> now we're now we're also now when you're talking about social security numbers and things like that, that's a different story. But I'm talking about. I'll just use the example of a tax map again. Mm -hmm. What? Why would I have to have a signed, dated copy of a part of a tax map? What would be the purpose of that? What what does it gain anyone? Um, when you, I'm not talking about the tax map. Okay. Other records. Like what? Okay. Well, you said any records. So any records that could potentially be an issue for an individual, like when Bruce was here, that for us the safety is not allowing electronic equipment <laughs> being used in that area. And if you want so, a copy, you get a hard copy, and it can be dated and signed out. So, okay. I, 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 so I, you're, you're asking us to do something that's not considered green. Um, taking a photograph saves paper. So you're throwing a, a whole ream of paper out there. It could be um, also, just, do you ever do you ever have that, that people ask the, you over the, the phone to email them a copy of a record? Mm -hmm. of yeah. So, you get some requests to email copies of records. I get that a lot. Yeah. So that's um, and actually from, when, from you, when, you, when you look from at the town clerk, no. when you look at the, how old the books are and the handling, it's actually better to take a photograph than to have you handling them on the right. printer Keep and them all apart. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just not clear with what you're referring to. Where the security risk would be in in, in, a, in public documents? Because you had requested, why don't we have email voting um, a couple meetings? Ago. Actually, I'd like to bring yeah. that back up. That's a whole different right. situation. But That's um, not related to our records. Well, you're it's talking a whole about different security. Situation. Of the phones, well, we'll, but we'll find out soon enough. I'm not curious, anyway, Tom. You, know, what you, we, um, you had you were doing some homework on on that. What what did you discover? You had concerns. Um, I have concerns about um, hacking the town computer system. Yes, in general, absolutely. But that's that's not what we're talking about here. How could that, that happen? Or Did it happen of, with electronic equipment closer by? How? No. What type of distance is hacking? Oh, it okay, no, it could, ha it could happen so, in this room. It could happen anywhere. It, that's that's 
it, the, the location is not the issue. So you have concerns of hacking, taking files that way? Or, and that's some, it's not, the, our, our threats are not necessarily taking files, it's corrupting the database that we have. That's, that's what a concern and is made. the definition of corruption is like uh, blanking them out? Well, I mean, if we want to, if you want to have a talk about cybersecurity, we can do that. But I don't think this is the, really the That's time to have it. But I'd be glad to speak to you in details about these things. But my concern is not is not public records being um, propagated. I don't I don't see the security risk in a public record being propagated. I do see a security risk in a computer system getting hacked where corruption of files can occur. There's a difference. And I just want to make that clear. So how, we, how do you see files being corrupted? Files can be corrupted in many, many ways. Yeah, you can go and research it on Google. So, but I want to distill this down to what I think your, your request here is that we don't allow people to take pictures of the town records. Is that your request? I, I was putting it forth as a discussion to talk about because um, it just felt too easy okay. for, for people to be taking photographs. When Bruce and his wife were here, they had concerns about <coughs> potential records the, being the topic, taken. The topic was not about records being found, but the sensitive information like social security on those records and the policies around right. control and that. That's the, photo that's, of it that's the relevant. If there's a if there's a number on a document that should not be shared to the public, whether you photocopy it or take a picture, it's irrelevant. It's the it's the treating of those numbers coming in, and so that's what um, what we have investigated and researched, and that's what this state has statutes about. So that that was really my understanding of what your topic was, not about um, photographing records. So I guess you um, you want to switch that. Anyway, we've talked about um, photographing records. I guess that's we could go forth and inquire from the, the state statutes. That's not something I researched about whether that's that's illegal to prohibit that or not. So um, I guess we could report back on that. But if that's enough, I guess we've discussed. You know, does anyone else have anything they want to say about? Yes or no to use cameras to take pictures of town documents, Martha? Well, I was what Julie said about um, it, it's really better to take a photograph of some of these older things. I mean, our archives at the Herald go back to the 1870s, and we, you know, often have people come in looking through them, and we ask them if they have a device to take a picture because it saves the. I mean, some of those old books are pretty fragile, mm -hmm. and instead of trying to wrestle it onto the copy machine. You know, although I did have somebody once ask me for scissors, <laughs> I told them no. Yeah. no. <laughs> but anyway, no. I just thought that no. made, that was a good point she made about how it, um, it's, a no. way, it's a, a way to preserve records as well. So, sorry. So I will, I will inquire if there's any policies around using cell phones to make copies of, of public documents. Because recently like we've, we've gotten that we're, we're charging for the process of using a phone to take. Correct. Which is new. Correct. That is new. That's new. Mm -hmm. Right. A, cop a copy so is a copy. Around, it was like, hmm, right. maybe it's a good idea not even to use those phones. Okay. <laughs> Incredibly convenient because the person. Well, I understand probably that that's that's what I'm like talking about is the convenience, and maybe it's too convenient. That person is going to take the printed document, scan it, attach it to an email, and send it. More than likely. Yeah, so it, hard copy. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah. it's, but it, but it, it, it's going to be. be it's going to be exposed in the same exact way as a cell phone photograph would be. Yeah, take a, a hard picture copy, of the document. A hard copy can be dated and signed off so right. that it is right. a copy. Well, that, there's date stamps on photographs, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, photograph is <coughs> date stamped as well. So you, it, it's all there. there the just main thing is it's, it's public, public documents, <coughs> just like this is a public meeting, and it's um, 
I always thought you were yeah, I was concerned gonna, about I think the, the same thing. Public, the, the <coughs> publicness of our work and the documents. So I find it strange that you're concerned about making it interested in making it harder to you've access. You've those. always been an advocate yeah. of open government, right? Uh, and yeah. To me, yeah. This well, uh, this is aids in that. Effort. I'm not. Hey, we have to also look at the, our own protection. And it saves trees. Well, I, I don't, dis sure I don't disagree have, with that. I'm just I'm saying, not sure right now. I'm just and saying what's that going there's, on. There's, I mean, at the state level, there's, they're dealing with record issues too. It's right. Like, well, so there's certain records that need protection, and happen. others that do not. Others do not. It's, it's a public record. I don't. I don't yeah, see where it needs to be protected right now. You know. On what? To, what is? Well, you know, if policy changes in the future, we will adapt. But right now, I don't believe there's any restrictions so. on a public record. No. No. None. So, um, that we have enough record of that conversation now? Yeah. We discussed um, it. Yeah. We <laughs> did. We um, discussed yeah. it. That's, what, um, that's it's nice. good. Joan here, does she have some updates? She's not, no. She's not in here. Okay, I know she's been working away. Um, Tony, any um, news from the library? Well, uh, yeah, we were wanted to thank Patty for coming to the last trustees meeting. My pleasure. Uh, most of this stuff that I talk about you can get in the paper anyway, but I just will mention that uh, last week we had a film done by Rob and, Sh and Shar uh, on the Islamic, Islamic art and culture. So it was really quite a good one. And, uh, and there were quite a few people there. Uh, and then Jeanette has been working on a lending library of things. And I think that was written up in the last week's paper here, too. Uh, so that people could actually go to the library and get uh, some kind of a device or thing that they might not have uh, to use. And uh, this is just beginning, but uh, maybe that will work out to be something uh, kind of neat, I don't know. Uh, but tomorrow night, th this is not a library thing, but tomorrow night uh, there's a film uh, called Suppressed, and it's about the uh, effort in Georgia to suppress voting rights uh, for, uh, well, for blacks mainly, but Stacey Abrams and so on, everybody knows about that kind of thing. Uh, there'll be some voter stories on the film and a discussion uh, afterwards about this, what maybe we should be aware of to do this, and uh, Lizzie Shackleton will be leading that. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so that... Um, Moves on to the exciting topic of Cooter's big day today. How is the highway going? Yeah, we're going to be without a truck for a couple of weeks, probably. We had a, I had a plow dig in and broke the plow frame and punctured a hole in the radiator. And life was pretty bad there for a little bit. A broken plow frame and punctured radiator. Yeah. At least you didn't get hurt. Right. Yeah. Put your head on the windshield. No, I have a seat belt on. What what road did this happen on? Clay Hill. We're on uh, Clay Hill. Right in front of Lois's house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I offered him coffee, but he refused. <laughs> I needed something stronger. It's too early. Where is the truck now? The truck is at the garage now. It's mm -hmm. going to go to Clark's tomorrow. And hopefully, they'll get the radiator in. And then we'll take it to Barry and they'll. The plow frame pack. So which, uh, which truck? Mine. The International. The red one. Uh, they're towing it up there. We're gonna put it on a little bit. Okay. You you do it yourselves. That's Richard Blue's gonna. Okay. 
that's cheaper than towing. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> By a lot. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> and Julie started the insurance process, and I haven't heard from them, but I'm sure I will. Mm -hmm. So you're going downhill? No. No, you're going up. It's going uphill. Right. Yeah, I was doing about five miles an hour. Thank wow. God. Yeah. Just, and the road is hard. <clears throat> two feet from in front of where I did it, and two feet after. <laughs> but right there, it was some soft. Yeah. The guy in Barry, the ten caller, said this winter because of the freeze and thaws, they've been doing two or three of these a week. Really? Oh my God. Well, wow. he said I shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. You shouldn't. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, I know there's at least a half a dozen inverted speed bumps on Maple Hill from the <laughs> plowing against. Well, yeah. Bethel Road is like a roller coaster in spots. Wow, I've been Street. digging in up there. And yeah. No, the same thing, and it was just bound okay. to happen. It's okay. It slows us down. Yeah. Anything else from the highway department? I think that's it. That's enough. I think that's enough. That's yeah. enough, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, Terry, Benny, um, haven't found a sump pumper yet? No. No. It hasn't rained much either. No, it hasn't rained much. Man. Enough to do it, but it's it's still a little bit high at times when it's warm. I mean, I don't know whether we can. I'm gonna cut, I guess call the state and see what our regs are about going in everybody's house to look. I mean, we haven't got to go in everybody's, but a few we need to. I wish somebody would just say, you know, we, yeah, I got a sump pump going. It's the only thing it can be is a pump coming in. Because it drops right down. Three days after rain, there's nothing coming in again. Maybe somebody with a gutter piped in. Well, Terry's talked about this a couple of times. <clears throat> the conversation is held in here. And Martha, make sure something in the paper. Oh, someone. I, it, I, it, I, I, I know I read your articles, and I, I don't no. know if I read last week. It was in. But it was maybe in the asking the person to come forward? It was in that, last meeting. Because Terry said he would, he would help and him I try to solve it. That's why I brought it up. Okay, if it's ready, done. Yeah, I mean, I, I withdraw. I, but that doesn't mean the person. More to be happy to go no. help him try solving it. I was going to yeah. say, it doesn't mean the person who has the rogue sun pump read the Herald. But, you know, True. it's in there. But if, right. if you've done it, that, that's the only reason. I think probably next, in March, when we send the water bills out, I think we should. Write something right to send that with them, then yeah. everybody would be sure to get it. Yeah. Especially the fact that Terry says, we'll help you solve it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, I mean, most everybody's had water problems. I've gone, I haven't charged them to, you know, find a toilet that's running through or anything else. I think that's just part of helping out. But this is just. It's something that's been done the last three years, two to three years, two years, I'd say. And it's funny, it won't do it every time either, that's what. You know, right. Well, I guess that's to be. And to find a pump when it's pumping is, you know, say if it's up Brook Street somewhere, it's to pick the right manhole cover to see where it's coming <laughs> from. <laughs> You had a better chance finding a diamond hay pile mm -hmm. than to find that, you know, to hit the right spot at the right time. I mean, the only time you can do it really is is real early in the morning, you know, before anybody's up. Because as soon as people get up, somebody, you know, taking a shower or something like that, you got now you got your foals are mm -hmm. up and down. All right, well, well, I think that's a good idea to put a note in with the water bills. Just to, you know. Yeah, I, I think that would be the first yeah. step. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then cool. maybe somebody will step ahead and say, yeah, we uh, had somebody to cook a soft pop up in my basement. Yeah. And then maybe, maybe we find them. come and look at it. Then we could send our constable over there to talk to him. <laughs> Which leads me to the next item on our agenda. I, I is, mean, I just don't, I don't want to yeah. be real pain about that, but yeah. I mean, I think we need to get it out of there because it's, yeah. it's putting us quite a surcharge on the system each time. And that's the only one that's bothering The other ones aren't doing that. <clears throat> All right. So um, on the new business, we are finally um, getting around to approving a constable. The name, of course, our law enforcement services have been shifted over to the, the sheriff's department. But in terms of having a, a someone fill the position of constable in town, we did finally find someone who's willing to do it. And that's Mr. Dylan Dudley over there. And um, Nancy? Along with that, does that also take the responsibilities of animal <coughs> control and humane officer? I don't think so. I mean, it'd be nice to pile it all on him, but I don't think he signed up for all mm -hmm. that. No, he's just Not yet. Okay. Yeah. First things first. No, yes. we're real. <laughs> But this is something that we're required by state law to have that position filled, and, and um, we haven't had it since Mark left. The um, hiring the sheriff doesn't um, satisfy that requirement. So, and we've got no one else that's interested, and Dylan's willing to step up. So I would um, move to approve him or appoint him as a constable, and then of course we would reappoint you at the town meeting if you're still enjoying the, the position after a, a month, month and a half. Right. Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We don't have a cool badge for you, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may have speeding tickets. You got to get no. a cruiser or anything? No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can have a special police bicycle. Yes. <laughs> we don't used to have a bicycle. But we know oh, where to find yeah. it. Yeah. But they also have badges, didn't they? Yeah. Have a radio on um, um, for something that took a little more work than convincing someone to take that position, we have the um, the fiscal year 21 budget that the Budget and Finance Committee spent, I don't know how many hours, lots of meetings, hammering this out. Um, and it was a challenge. Of course, we get to the point where it looks like a, a, a tax increase in the double digits and then we um, struggle and sharpen pencils and try and figure out how to keep it down as we've got it presented now this is of course we are just approving this to present to the voters at the town meeting we're not um, we don't just approve this budget and run with it it's up to the voters to approve this um, but we've got it down to a 3.6 percent increase in the um, in the in the tax rate, which is a it's a budget of one million eighty eight thousand seven hundred dollars, of which seven hundred eighty thousand five hundred and fifty dollars are to be raised by taxes. And Excuse me, I just want to make sure I got that right. One million eighty-eight thousand seven hundred. Yes. Of which, how much for taxes? Seven eighty-five five zero. Five five zero raised by taxes. Right. Thank you. And um, there will be, I'm sure, more conversation about this at the at the town meeting. But to there were some things that raised the expense. I think the overall budget itself went up like eight point something percent and we were able to keep the tax hike lower than that even though the cost of running the town went up and just the um, cost of living, cost of insurance, cost of taking care of our employees, sand and gravel and other sundry items but what we did not include in the budget to keep it from raising too high is we're not funding any of the reserve funds 
And in fact, we took the money that was in the reserve fund for highway equipment and we decided to pay off the note on the loader, which means then we don't have the expense of paying for that. That was one of the tweaks that we did to, um, to ratchet that tax increase down, just to try and keep it as low as possible. Um, anyway, that's, um, that's it in a, in a nutshell, really. You guys have anything you want to add to that? The trash. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we did um, the cost for the recycling pick up in, you know, bi-monthly in the town office here went, uh, originally was doubled and we talked with them a little bit and they lowered it some, but it still is raising by um, uh, $10,000, yeah. Yeah, yeah raising yeah. that Just like, just a, so it's $20,000 a year. $20,400 So we have separated that out as a separate voted article from the budget and that gives, uh, for the, again, for the town to make the decision um, if we did not pay for this $20,000 for recycling, that would keep our um, tax increase to like 1.4% increase. Um, but that is not, again, not a decision that we wanted to, to make on our own. We're coming to a point where we're going to have to differentiate between critical services and extra services in town. And uh, Nancy? I think we should say also that the other two items that are not part of the figures that, that you just read um, are Werva, Werva and the library, mm -hmm. both of which will be um, voted as articles. Right. And it doesn't include any of the appropriations from nonprofit agencies. Right. So that's what um, we're going to put in the um, in the town report for the town to digest and and vote on at the town meeting in March. So um, I move to approve this hammer out budget. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I guess we already dealt with the discussion of handling public records. We also have. Uh, uh, application for um, the class four road winter maintenance from um, Kenny Beatty on uh, Oak Lodge Road. That, that small piece of road that they have been plowing and uh, taking this step to um, conform to our new relatively policy. new policy. And I would move to approve that. Aye, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. So that. Um, so it seems to me there's another oh. another one that would need. Yeah, we'd like to uh, yeah. um, make a motion to approve uh, funding for a new com some new computers for the town hall, as well as a new server. And that the amount it comes to around, it's going to be an approximate, but it's about $3,700. And uh, that's going to buy us a new server, a couple of new computers, a couple of new monitors, and associated hardware and accessories. Trying to get the uh, the town's computer system is in need of a serious update in many in many ways, and this show, we should uh, should take care of it. Yeah, so you put up bid. Uh, no, no, it, no we just we generally look for the cheapest place we we can to buy it. You know, um, it'd be online somewhere. We'll buy the equipment. It's 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 tough to beat the the, the prices no, we can find online. I know, like I know when you get big equipment. Yeah, yeah, I think ten thousand. Yeah, the this is this is a deal. You know. Yeah, exactly. But it, I mean, it's a good point. But it's this is such a small amount. It was really just a small amount of equipment compared. Three thousand. No, three thousand seven hundred thousand. Yeah, three thousand. No, not thirty. Oh yeah, okay. right. yeah. If it was thirty, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in reference to new equipment like yep. this in uh, our town website and uh, dot com. 
possible? Is that is that how we work it? Because I've been hearing uh, that through the dot gov has safer systems for communities than just being exposed. Uh, Actually, there is some discussion. I've had some discussion about that very topic with uh, I was just with one of our one of our new IT people. We've actually we're actually that's that's in discussion right now. No, it's 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 a good point. We are talking about are whether pros and cons about that. Yeah, we're dot org right now. Yeah, I wasn't real dot clear com, that's commercial. exactly. If yeah. com means commercial, and that's not yeah. what we're well. It's easier to hack. Um, but we're not dot com. Well. I, I don't know. I just heard, I was just yeah, hearing I, right. this. We are currently dot org. I don't know what the dot org or whatever, but dot gov right. has a safety system in it that towns can utilize supposedly to, to help protect a firewall. Perhaps. 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 I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, you just might know more. I just wanted to put it out there. Yeah. Okay. Good. So are you voting to approve this, or? Um, I'd make a motion to approve yeah. uh, an approximate funding of 3700 for new computer equipment for the town of Rochester. Yeah, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Um, all right. Can't wait to buy it. Um, Harlan? Yeah. I don't have anything to report about the book, do you? No, I don't. No. Do you got any new places for me to look or anything? Or? Um, actually, not just for the book, as we call it, but for any other um, material that might be of interest. I did talk to uh, um, um, I have a mental block right now. I can't. Uh, Mr. Brown, who um, is, I guess, currently kind of in charge of the uh, room downstairs, and uh, he, he told me to go ahead and go in and check it out. So I'm going to be doing American that. American Legion room. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be doing that on Wednesday. Jeff Brown? Yeah, Jeff. Thank you. So am I correct? You're going downstairs to look at the room downstairs, huh? At the, in the American Legion room, yes. <laughs> just, just to inspect, actually. You're looking at microfilm, Nancy? Is that what you said last time? I went to Middlesex and went through <clears throat> some microfilm, um, but I was not able to find anything. But we haven't given up. Um, there's a possibility that Middlesex will will have another um, set of some microfilm that was sent there that they misplaced. Or I'm not sure they misplaced it; someone else did. But so we'll. It's all coming back together, and we will be viewing all of that too. So see, we're making some remarkable strides with a little perseverance. Well, things it doesn't happen happening. quite as often as you'd like it to happen. Well, yeah, but things are happening. That's better than, nah, we haven't even thought about it. Well, we get an A for effort. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, see, it's, it's good. It's good. All right. Um, Mason's I think that's all we have for Mason no? had an oh, oh, you have an and, and, oh, and, Susan, and, and Susan had something yeah, about yeah, I, um, I, I just want to preface my comment by saying I appreciate the work that you guys do, and I understand that as uh, the select board that you have to deal with lots of difficult situations during the meeting. But I did want to bring up something for you to consider. Um, I was very disappointed in the last meeting that when we were here um, because I felt that the way that cloud was treated was really um, unfortunate. And I feel that particularly for you, Dune, that as the head of the, of the select board, that you have a very um, high standard that you need to set to to um, set as an example for everyone and how to treat people in these meetings. And I felt that the way that you um, handled, the way that you interacted with Cloud when he brought up his concern about the um, about the tennis courts was, um, and you brought up the fact that he had a lawsuit and that the bridge had been paid for. I, I just felt like that had nothing to do with that. And I also feel that. 
um, regardless of whether you agree with someone or you find them annoying or whatever it is, they have a right to bring up their concerns and their questions without being attacked. And so I would just like you to consider that, 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 that in order for all of us to be civil, that you yourself have to model that. And, um, you know, he had brought that up and you had, you know, mentioned these things about the bridge or mentioned the things about his lawsuit. Um, and like saying, like, really, how dare you, Cloud, bring this up because of these other things? I find that you, you said, you know, that you felt that that was, you know, ironic that he was bringing that up. And um, I would just say that when I'm sitting here, first of all, I find it incredibly unpleasant. And there have been times when I thought, I'm not coming back to this meeting because it's so unpleasant. I hate, I hate that when we are not able to treat each other civilly. And, you know, tonight was a great example. You guys were fantastic. And I know it's not always easy, but I think just to be aware of that and also that um, it may make someone feel like, oh, I can't bring up something that people disagree with because I might be attacked like that. And so just to caution you to, to be mindful of that um, and really everyone should feel comfortable raising issues. And I think 99% of the, 95% of the time they do. But really that should be um, our goal as a community, but also you're leading that as the select board person. Um, and you know that, and for that instance, you know there were three other people that said, "Well, actually, you know what? I, I am kind of curious about that. I, you know, I am interested. This is you know something that maybe we should talk about." So even though you had kind of dismissed him after the fact, myself, Jim Bowman, and I, Rob, I think his name is, said, "You know, actually, maybe we should talk about that. Well, that is something that is valuable." So I think that you know there may be times when you guys are irritated or you don't agree with a person or um, but everyone should have that right and everyone should feel comfortable doing that without feeling that their past history or things that are unrelated are going to be dragged up so i just like you to consider that and um, I think that that will be good for everyone encourage everyone to feel comfortable in raising concerns and um, make us a more civil a more civil uh, community Right. Well, I want to taken. agree with everything she said, yeah. and I'd like to add is the misconception that this lawsuit was somehow brought, brought you know, by Mason solely. There's two parties involved in this, and I know for a fact that when we started out on this journey, the last thing in, that Mason wanted was to have to hire a lawyer to sue the town. The town pushed Mason into a corner where the only alternative he had was to sue the town. So I think you guys are just as much responsible as anyone else in this room for, uh, you know, what's going on. I, I don't necessarily think we have to rehash that whole thing, but I do think there is something to be said for that in our society, when you don't agree with something, that is, that's, that is what's available to us. I mean, if somebody did something to you and you didn't like it and you tried other things, you may very well have a lawsuit. But, you know, and, and people may agree with you, and other, but there's other people that disagree with you. In this case, there are people that agree and there's people that disagree with a lawsuit. But um, I think that, you know, that's, that's just in our society. That's how you handle problems when you get to a point where you can't do anything. You, you go to law, you go to, you know, you, you have a lawsuit. So. Um, I think that, you know, that, that's, uh, and, 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 that, and that in particular was just not even related to the issue that Cloud had brought up, and I just think... It's only so. through money, but they, they it's quite issue. well taken, and, you know, and the town is, in, in response to what you were saying, Harlan, is the town is responding. We're the ones that we're... We're the defendant. We're the defendant. We're the defendant. There's no attempt to mediate yeah. this. Oh, no, that's not true. Oh, no, that's not true. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true at all. Patty and I spent a whole day... This whole idea. We, it's, there has it's been wrong. Every the road they had with okay. four signatures. This is not on the agenda, well, so... I mean, just saying, you know? This is on the free time, right? At the end, when you get to say what you want to say. You guys can, but we can't then, right? But I thank you. You took Susan. the job, Mason. Susan, thank you for your you comments tonight. You took the job. Right. Right. The job what you're saying. To, you know, be nice to the public. Yeah. Be nice so. to the public. Yeah, I know. We should treat them with respect. You don't respect. have that. 
Yeah. yeah. So what's your point? It's funny you don't always do that. Okay, well. Mason, what's your final thoughts? Yeah, yeah. We've, got an, we've got an announcement here, though. Yeah. Uh, I recently signed up for the emailing from the town clerk and uh, realized how helpful it is. And having community access is a great way to communicate to our voters that getting on uh, Julie's email list is a great idea. Um, I notice it's, it's, it's pretty sparse at the moment. There's probably what, 20, 20 folks on the email list. And the email list is, is very helpful in being able to see the agenda ahead of time. So you, uh, basically, well, with select board meetings, we have, what, 24 meetings a year. And if voters are a little more educated about what's going on, you know, six meetings a year is pretty good for a, a voter to attend. Um, but I think there just needs to be ways that the select board can reach out more to the voters to, to see that involvement. And I think this email process that got started for notification is a, is a, a great way to go. Um, uh, even like tonight when we're, you're looking at the budget, uh, preliminary ideas can be put out on the email so that people can look at it at home and digest it and be able to get feedback, you know, before it's actually printed in the, uh, uh, the, the town report, which is, what, two weeks, uh, two weeks in advance. Yes. And just knowing that. But it's also a great place to with community access to be able to let people know that we have uh, like six openings, positions coming up this year for election and to give the voters an opportunity to think about it instead of it just being at the town meeting quite often where uh, those thoughts get gelled. So better participation by sharing the information a little more. Is, that was my announcement. Okay. Since Community access is here. And Thank you. I'd just like to Nancy. just, um, Mason, the warning will be posted no later than Friday, which is by law. It has to be posted by Friday. So that will happen. And there is a pre town meeting at the February 27th, is it? Is that a Monday? No. 24. 22nd? 24. 24. So, so being posted, most likely to go out on email? Mm -hmm. Right. So this, you know, it's and, a great idea and for... And so there's a pre-town meeting um, on that Monday of the select board meeting, prior to the select board meeting, and then town meeting after that on the 2nd. You know, even like today with community access, letting folks know it's... I know a lot of people have free jobs, but this is the opportunity now to let your employers know that you're going to take Monday night off, you know, because you're coming to town meeting in a few weeks. So you know, a little more advancement to let people know. They're going to get their town reports somewhere around the uh, 20th of February. February. Well, that was what I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice, and gone. Thank you all for coming out. No. All right.